good at vulnerability? Uh, vulnerability means that we are honest, means that we are, are opening ourselves up. And sometimes we don't want to open ourselves up or we're very selective about to whom we open ourselves up. And what's really neat for me in this gospel lesson for today, where we're going to hear Jesus say, who do you say that I am? It's, he's calling the disciples to be vulnerable, to admit things, to admit what they see, and to think about and reflect. And as the people of God, we are called to be as vulnerable and admit who Jesus is in our lives and then share that with others. And so we're going to be tackling that question, who do we say, who, uh, tackling Jesus' question to us, who do you say that I am? And so let us join our hearts together for our theme song, Change My Heart, O God. We praise you with all our heart and bow down in your holy temple. Everything in all creation is saying thank you because you are the one who is faithful and merciful. We hear your words and sing of your ways. Though you are high above, you meet us in trouble and turmoil. Make your purpose known in us. We praise you with all our heart and bow down in your holy temple. Sending God, your heart is filled with mercy. Your highest hope for us is that we would take our ordinary, everyday life and turn it inside out in worship of you and service to others. Because we are confident in your mercy, we can bring our prayers of confession before you. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We conform to the patterns of this world without even thinking. We are see ourselves more highly than we should. We do not use the gifts you've given us as we could. We have not given our life in worship of you and service to others. Forgive us. Merciful God, 
we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whose life, death, and resurrection forgives sin and brings eternal life. In Christ, we are many, but we form one body. In Christ, we have different gifts, but we are connected in one purpose. In Christ, we are motivated by mercy. All glory and honor is yours now and forever. We worship you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to reveal you to the world. Help us to see Jesus for who he is and follow his lead in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. My helpers are called forward. teachers and their assistants, tutors, administrators, crossing guards, and school boards. Bless principals and their assistants, janitors, coaches, nurses, and bus drivers. Bless parents and those acting as parents with wisdom, patience, and understanding. May they provide good homes and environments that encourage learning. And bless our children who come forward. What up here? I'd invite your children to come forward, and if y'all will get on one side and the other, there's a car there for you. And let us have some fun blessing the youth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who wants to? Hmm? She'll be on. She's over at the helping. Who wants me to bless them? And we have Denise over here who can also bless. All right. Come on up, come on up, come on, come on, come closer, come closer, good, Christy, come on, Pidget. Justin, come on up here, and we'll start with Emily, on Emily's shoulder, there you go, this is just a little bit of olive oil, nothing to be afraid of, okay, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, bless Emily with your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of patience and knowledge the spirit of desire for learning, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and continuing through the school year. Amen. Right there. There we are. Say, bless Anna Gray, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of patience and knowledge, the spirit of desire for learning, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and continuing through the school year. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, bless Scarlet with your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of patience and knowledge, the spirit of desire for learning, the spirit of presence both now and continuing through the school year. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, bless Colby with your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of patience and knowledge, the 
the spirit of desire for learning, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and continuing through the school year. Amen. I'd like to invite the children forward for their special message. Okay, you can be the first one. It's all right. Come on in. Have a seat. Come on, have a seat. There we go. There we go. So glad y'all are here. Come on up. Have a seat. You know me. There we go. What? <laughs> there we are. I'm going to share with you all something, something special. If you come into my office, you see this looking thing. What would you call this? You have no idea what you would call this, okay? Um, what would you all call it? What does it look like? Well, let me ask you this question then. Is it pretty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's gorgeous. Somebody made this um, for me. And I just think it's wonderful. It's actually made of all different kinds of wood. Each of, the, each of these broken cut pieces of wood was individually stained, and then they were all glued together, and, they were, and then they were lacquered and finished. Um, so each of these pieces of wood was shaped in a special way, and it took great care and attention. But it was made up of all broken leftover scraps of wood. And I was thinking about this and thinking about us and the start of the school year. And I was thinking, you know what? This is kind of like what God does in our lives. God is the ultimate shaper. He's looking to mold us and to shape us for us to be loving and kind and generous. That means we're looking to, to share what we have with others. And so God takes us, but God takes the good things like the pretty pieces of wood and then the bad things in our lives, like the rough pieces of wood, and brings them all together to form something beautiful. Just like take, God takes the times when you cry and the times when you laugh, and he pulls them all together to shape you into a beautiful child of God. So let us fold our hands, our heads, and please pray repeating after me. Thank you, Jesus, that you walk with us whether we cry or whether we laugh, you're always with us, working good. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us, help us to love others. Amen. Thank you all very much. Good job. which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you are dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. 
Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the 12th chapter of Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district, he asked his disciples, who do people say that, I, that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples, not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, thanks be to God. Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say, who do people say that I am? George Barna released the results of a poll in April of 2015 about who Americans say Jesus is. He upholded a vast array of people, and there, there's good news, and then there is concerning news. 
The good news is that the vast majority of people said that Jesus was a real historic person. 92% of people said, yep, Jesus really existed. But after that, the results are less promising. Only 56%, 56% ad of adults believe that Jesus was God. 26% say that he was a spiritual leader. Forty-six percent of adults believe that Jesus lived a sinless life. Fifty-two percent, fifty-two percent say that Jesus sinned like everybody else, and two percent shrugged their shoulders and said, "I'm not sure." Sixty-three percent of adults believe that when you die, you go to heaven because you confess your sin and accept Jesus as your savior. 20% of adults believe that you'll go to heaven for other reasons, like being good, helping, or even believing the Ten Commandments. 15% shrugged their shoulders and said, I'm not sure. And then there was this 2% little bit that said, there's no heaven. Who do people, who do people say that Jesus is? Well, evidently, there's a lot of confusion out there. There is a lack of faith. There's not much clarity. And we could spend the time asking ourselves why. Why is it that there's all this confusion about Jesus? But rather than point the finger of blame or make a list of excuses, let's simply ask ourselves a touchy question. How much time do we spend with Jesus? How much time do we spend with Jesus? Now, this is not a guilt trip. It's just a chance for us to be honest with ourselves before a God who loves us. How much time do we spend with Jesus? We tackle that question because I believe that we come to know who Jesus really is the more time we spend with him. So that's what led to Peter's confession. After asking, who do people say that I am? Jesus asked the disciples then, who do you say that I am? Jesus moved from a public opinion poll to a personal space that required honesty and vulnerability to answer truthfully. The disciples were being asked, in essence, folks, after having been with me for nearly three years, what do you believe about me? How long have you walked with Jesus? How many hours have you wrapped up Bible reading, in prayer, in worship, serving other people? How many times and hours have you spent arguing with modern-day Pharisees? Or how much, how often have you been out there healing in Jesus' name? For three years, for three years, Peter followed Jesus. It all started the day that Jesus wandered by and said, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Dropping everything to follow Jesus, he saw Jesus do some amazing things. He saw Jesus drive out demons, give sight to the blind, make the deaf hear, bring the lame to their feet, cleanse lepers, proclaim good news to the poor, teach a God-inspired way of living, and cast out fevers. He saw Jesus still storms on the Sea of Galilee. He was part of the group that was sent out with the same power to heal that Jesus gave him. He successfully, he, they, uh, Peter and others, saw Jesus successfully defeat those who would argue religion, reveal the kingdom of God through parables, walk on wet water, bless Hebrew and non-Hebrew people alike, and then he saw Jesus raise the dead. What was Peter to say about these things? Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? And thinking about Peter and his list, the, all the things that he saw Jesus to do, what would your list look like? What have you seen Jesus do? I was thinking about that. I've seen Jesus do some amazing things. I saw Jesus turn enemies into friends. I've seen Jesus make addicts clean, stretch forth, God's hand at a potluck to make sure everybody was fed on just a couple casseroles. I've seen Jesus restore marriages, conquer prejudices, 
confront sin with a firm yet compassionate love. I've seen Jesus set troubled youth on the right path, answer prayers, desperate prayers at the start of a test, provide a job through seemingly serendipitous events, and keep folks from major sin and thus out of major trouble. That's a short list, a short list. What's on yours? What is on yours? What have you seen Jesus do? What do you have to say about the things that you've seen Jesus accomplish? Who do you say Jesus is? Well, Peter made his confession. Jesus says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Peter confessed, Jesus, you are Emmanuel, God with us, God among us, and God for us. Who do you say Jesus is? You see, you and I cannot say who Jesus is without a relationship that's close and personal. We cannot share Jesus and even have a hard time sharing our community with others if we've not answered that question for ourselves. But to do so means that we have to be honest and we have to be vulnerable. And whenever we are vulnerable, we could be hurt. But Jesus is worth the risk. If for nothing else, Jesus is worth the risk because he risked it all for you and for me. Depending upon God's promise through the prophets to make sure things for the death of his chosen one, Jesus willingly went to the cross. Sinless, he died a life in sin, taking our sin, that is, upon himself so that we might be free from sin's power. You see, sin's power is the guilt and the shame that's held over us when we do something wrong. You know that feeling you get when you've done somebody wrong? That little bit of guilt or shame that's inside of you? That's sin, sin's power at work. Sin's power is like this constant rewind tape helping us to relive those moments when we've hurt other people or other people have hurt us. Jesus died so that we might be forgiven of that. God's tape of wrongdoing is wiped clean. And our rewind tape can be wiped clean if we give it all over to Jesus. On account of Jesus, we no longer have to live in the guilt and the shame of past mistakes. We are set by him on the path of making things right. Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins, and he lay in that tomb dead for three days. Since all the power, death was broken. God raised Jesus from the dead, showing that God's love is more powerful than sin and the devil all combined. Jesus risked it all for you. Who do you say Jesus is? Martin Luther answered that question. Pull out your catechisms. Turn to page 29. This is a great book. Stood the test of time. And there, um, on page 29 in the small catechism, you see the second article of the creed that starts, I believe in Jesus Christ. And Martin Luther wanted to make sure that people understood what that meant, so he would give, a lot of times, his own personal take on it. And so there on page 29, we read, Was ist das? I don't know German. I just remember that from catechism. What does this mean? Or what is this? And, G and Martin writes about Jesus here in the second article of the Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father in eternity and also a true human being, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. Is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost, condemned human being. He has purchased and freed me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. He has done all this in order that I may belong to him, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in eternal righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead and lives and rules eternally 
This is most certainly true. Let's say that out loud together, that last line. This is most certainly true. If you've ever had to memorize any bit of this, you're always happy to hear those words and say those words. This is most certainly true. And then you would wipe your brow. But that's who Jesus is to Martin Luther. What do you say? Who is Jesus to you? What do you have to say about him? How would you share him with your friends? This is how Martin Luther answered. How about you? Who do you say Jesus is? Amen. Please rise as you're able. And together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts of mercy and forgiveness. We can only approach you because you have first approached us. Father, we pray for your church, freedoms, and every church gathering to proclaim Jesus as Lord and God. Father, make us bold in word and deed. Show us all how better to share your love and your kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, we lift before you our sick, and those who are grieving. Every name on this list, Lord, has a face and a life and a body of people surrounding them with comfort and support. So as we lift them up, Lord, we also think about the family and the friends who are with them, walking with them on their journey. So we lift up before you Deborah Meacham, Betty Jo Waller, Brenda Cobb, Peyton Horn, Grace Sensenbaugh, Betty Campbell, Ruby Loy, Shirley Creasy, Lucille Ray, David Ross, Evely Baldwin, John Walker, Ruth Weirich, Robert and Lucille Miles, Virginia Geringer, Franklin and Ruth Teague, Shelley Miller, Hannah Lilienthal, Don Green, Melissa Jernigan, Mildred Blevins, Irene Finelli, Jeff and Deborah Whitlock and their son Jeffrey, Henry Deal, Rebecca and Emmett Lawson, Martha Miles, Christine Thompson, Madeline McDowell, Spanky and Sandy Jones, Richard Weitzel, Glenn Little, Jeff and Janet Howard, Roy Black, Annie Panachone, Mickey and Doris Hughes, the family of Helen Michael, the family of Vicki Woods, the family of Alex Magum, 
Also to Lord we lift up Edith Job and George Pierce. May they find healing and wholeness in you. May they experience your presence with them, healing, comforting, strengthening, and encouraging them in their suffering. Strengthen us to walk with those we love so that they might know of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, your creation is suffering. Pollution, war, disease, cruelty, poverty, and oppression abound. Most recently, Lord, the hurricane, Hurricane Harvey hitting Texas. You call your church as your body in Jesus to reach out to the world to bring your justice and provide relief. Show us, Lord, how we might help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's love and peace with each other.
send us power, send us grace. The love and mercy of God draws us into community in the body of Christ. We come to the table to meet the risen Christ in bread and wine. Here we celebrate and remember the saving action of God through Jesus Christ. Here we find forgiveness for sin and life for all eternity. God, in Jesus Christ, you revealed your mercy for all humanity. From the beginning of time, you demonstrated your faithfulness to your people. You led us from brandage into the land of promise. You seek us and find us. You draw us to yourself through your kindness and compassion. You welcome us to an eternal home where we celebrate the great feast through eternity. In the night, Jesus took bread again. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. When we eat and drink, we celebrate and remember the mystery of your saving action our behalf.
this sacrament, you, Lord, unite us and bless us. You welcome us and nourish us. Guide us on the way of love for you and for one another. Assist those sent forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick and homebound. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Go and live for God's purposes. Go and use your unique gifts to extend mercy in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Go and serve others through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.